I've been an obsessive submitter in my day. I've since taken a break from this level of intensity, but I've gotten lots of questions about my process, particularly since I once shared a crazy elaborate spreadsheet that contained my every submission related move. I admit when I was single, when I wasn't cleaning diapers, I had a brilliant, beautiful, colorful spreadsheet to track my submission plan, but to hell with that. Now it's a text file. If I'm lucky, it contains what, where, and when for each submission, and that's it. But I keep getting more questions about the specifics of my plan, and I'm starting to realize more and more the danger of not focusing on the writing and instead focusing on the spreadsheet. I mean, I, I totally believe in the submission process, so that's definitely not something to ignore. But I think it's so important to just write as much as possible. I've had to remind myself of this emphasis on the writing because this uh, book publication process I'm going through for a little bit just totally shut down any new writing until I realized, man, I, I need to get back to work on book two. This to-be-published book is totally important to me, so I'm not trying to say that I don't think it's important to focus on those things, but it doesn't mean I should stop my writing. Bobby Ann Mason said when asked by students how to get published, she felt like saying to them, don't worry about it for 20 years or so. It takes that long before you really know what you're doing. And this brings me to a book I haven't even read, but I arrogantly quote a lot, uh, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. I, I honestly have no idea what kind of book it's like, but permit me to boil down one idea that I never actually read from the book, and that's that it takes approximately 10,000 hours to master a particular craft. Now that obviously isn't always the case, but I think it's reasonable to take that idea seriously. Many great writers did have to write that much. And a lot of people that you think suddenly come onto the scene, uh, when you dig into their history, you'll see that it might be sudden from your perspective, but from their perspective, they were quietly working their asses off until they became suddenly famous. So going back to those 10,000 hours, I mean, think about how many hours that is. That's a shitload of hours. If you write 10 hours a week, it takes 20 years to get to 10,000 hours. How many hours have you written? I vaguely tried to calculate this, and for me, it's somewhere in the realm of 9,000 hours across a 15-year period. Obviously, it's not something to like dwell on too much, but I still think it's worth thinking about just to see how many hours that really is. And I guess I'm not trying to suggest that all writers should shut down any submission plan or marketing plan for several decades as they get to this number. But it's really a, a good reminder, I think, for me and maybe to you, to focus as much as possible on the writing without disregarding the submitting and the marketing aspect of things, but just focus on getting stuff written and maybe not as much about achieving fame and fortune. I don't want to over-suggest the whole, if you build it, they will come philosophy. I mean, that has some horrible pitfalls to it too. But I would say that I see too much of the they must come and then I will worry about building it mentality. You know, where people focus too much energy on the attention and the accolades that they ought to be getting and not enough on honing the craft itself. And maybe to, to fully butcher this cliche, maybe it's more like work your ass off building it and then start ramping up your advertising campaign while simultaneously improving the quality of your work and then they will come and then you will deliver something that's truly worthy of their presence. There. Now that's a cute little phrase that would fit nicely in a fortune cookie.